Good evening and greetings from Jerusalem, Jane. I'm sitting here in my house. I have tried six times today to make one of those more professional video updates. Um, trying to do the right makeup and hair and lightning and get all of the information. But five, six times I just fell short. Um, I'm tired. <laughs> And I think that today is just one of these days where my body is reacting to the trauma and the hurts and the pain, the sorrow, the devastations, the atrocities, the mutilation, the rapes, the torture of children. Um, so I just sat down in my couch now and I just turned on my phone and I think no, I know that many of you are following me because I'm not one of those big established news outlet with a lot of people working and a boss telling you what to do and what to say. I'm just someone who is here and I speak from my heart. I speak what I see, I speak what I hear, I speak what I experience myself. It comes out now that I also shared about it previously, but Hamas had planned a much, much, much bigger attack. They were planning on infiltrating all the way into Judea and Samaria. They had planned this attack for more than a year. They had been in military boot camps. They had intelligence intel of the locations and the, commun the Jewish communities on the Israeli sites, they infiltrated 22 communities. They went as far as 20, 24 kilometers into Israel. They came here to rape, to murder, to kill, to massacre, to take grounds going all the way into Judea and Samaria. If we hadn't had the military, if the Jewish people have been defenseless, they would have slaughtered every single woman, child, elderly, pets that they came across. Hamas has been brutally attacking Israel since they took over in 2007 in the Gaza Strip. More than 30,000 rockets has been flying into Israel over all of these years. And they have taken all the aid coming into the civilian populations, all the money coming in, and they have built this underground network inside the Gaza Strip for nearly 20 years. Yesterday, the Israeli president was sitting with Mein Kampf, the book written by Adolf Hitler. It was translated into Arab. Where was that found? In one of the terrorist houses in Gaza with highlights and with his own notes. On many of the terrorists being killed inside Gaza, they found pamphlets from ISIS. This was a calculated attack on Israel. In the spirit of ISIS, in the spirit of Nazism, equal, demonic, satanic, evil from the pit of hell, that is the only way you can describe it. What they did to the Jewish people, the massacre and the mutilations, you haven't seen since the Second World War. You don't, we can't find the words. When the world is up in arms now that Israel is killing innocent civilians in Gaza, let me tell you something. Gaza is one of the biggest terrorist nests in the world. They have thousands and thousands of weapons, grenades, missiles placed throughout the entire Gaza Strip. The Israeli military is releasing videos and photos of rocket launching pads, of rockets, of grenades, of missiles, all throughout the Gaza Strip. Tunnels packed with all of these weapons. It is in mosques schools, UNRWA schools, it's next to hospitals, it's under hospitals, daycare centers, 
They are coming into civilian populated areas, coming into people's houses. In one room, the children are sleeping. In the next room, they are finding Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler. They are finding a lot of weapons. Photos of Nasrallah, photos of um, leaders in Iran. Israel has done what Israel always do, they target terrorist and terrorist sites, but because they are all over the Gaza Strip and they are next to all of these civilian populations, Israel is telling them evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. We know where the terrorist is, we know their name, and we are coming for all of them. Evacuate. It's also coming out again how the head quarters of Hamas is beneath the hospitals. They did that deliberately. They want to create exactly what we are seeing in media now. The whole world is up in arms that Israel is killing 10,000s of innocent civilians. No, Israel is not. Israel is killing terrorists. And then they are hiding behind innocent civilians and Israel is saying evacuate, get out of here. So the Shifa hospital Several layers down, that's where Hamas is, that's where their headquarters is, that's where they are, take, they are right now in a stronghold. Maybe some of the hostages are down there. So Israel is going in, they are surrounding the hospitals, except on the eastern side, there are no soldiers. And Israel has told people again, evacuate, evacuate. And we have seen Hamas terrorists preventing the civilians from evacuating. Why? Because they need their human shields. They need their human shields. They have said again and again, we don't care about the Palestinian populations inside the Gaza Strip. We don't care about the civilians. We need our human shields. So Hamas orchestrated this attack for years at least more than a year, and they knew the response from Israel. They were counting on it. And that's why they are hiding behind civilians, because they need those headlines like you're seeing in the media now. So Israel has again and again and again providing documentations. Here are the rocket launching pads. Here are the weapons. Here are the tunnel shafts. Here are the tunnels. Here are the grenades for the world to see that this is what we are fighting against. This is what we are up against. And they are telling people, evacuate, evacuate. Who was putting a fuel to the hospital last night? Israeli soldiers. They were bringing in 300 liters of fuel to help in the hospital with all the babies. Who refused the fuel? The leaders, Hamas, because, oh my goodness, we can't have a story in mainstream media that the hospital now has fuels for the babies because Israeli Defense Forces brought it in. Oh my God, that would be a horrendous PR for Hamas. So of course they declined it, but where is that fuel now? Probably in the bunkers for the generators for Hamas terrorists. Also today the Israeli Defense Forces released a video where you see a terrorist at the Al-Quds hospital. There are many hospitals inside Gaza, but you see terrorists in the Al-Quds hospitals firing at Israeli soldiers, right? They are coming in from the hospital. They run out, they fire, they ran back into the hospitals. That's where they are hiding. Evil, evil terrorist. They are killing Israeli civilians and they are hiding behind their own civilians inside the Gaza Strip. Hezbollah continues to fire anti-tank missiles into Israel. Yesterday, a group of civilians were attacked. They were working for the electric company. They were actually out repairing damages from previous attacks and several people were injured. So this was Hezbollah who was targeting civilians inside Israel. Only today it was released that one of these workers was killed. His name was actually Shalom. He was married and the father of two children. So Hezbollah murdering and Israeli civilians, there were also seven soldiers that was, in, that was injured in that attack yesterday. So Israel is retaliating. So things are getting more and more serious on the northern border. 
I want to again really, really encourage you to pray for Israel, but not just only that. Out of the blue yesterday, I saw that the Danish foreign minister was here. I had no idea. If I knew, I would have done everything I could to meet him. After living here for 10 years, I have quite a lot of things I would have told him. Um, today, I actually tried four times to record a video message for him personally. I would have shared it on my social media, but I had to give up. I think, I think the trauma and the tiredness was just, is wearing me out. I also didn't make a video yesterday. It was Shabbat. I was trying to allow myself to rest. Um, as a matter of fact, since this horrendous traumatic day October 7 I haven't really cried I haven't I have cried in a in a way where you tear up and you have a few tears but I haven't cried cried um, I don't even know why I think you just keep going you just keep going because I have to report I have to report um, but yesterday I did cry a bit because I heard a I heard a conversation between a father and a son and the father was saying hey it's me you know I just wanted to say hi how are you and he was like I'm good and the father is an Israeli Air Force pilot and he was in the sky above Gaza and his son was one of the soldiers inside Gaza so through the right channels this father who is in the sky, Israeli Air Force pilot, gets on the telecom with his son, finding his son. Uh, he was asking in the radio, is there someone by this name? And, and they were saying, yeah, yeah, he's here. And they're like, who's here? And he was like, it's his dad. And that got to me. A father is in the sky, a son is in the Gaza Strip, defending the only Jew state. I want you to focus. When you watch mainstream media today, and everything is focused about Gaza, and the civilian inside Gaza, and the dead children, I want you to focus. This is an all out war against this nation. This is an all out war against the Jewish people. With the enemy within, with the enemy around, what you see in the streets of Europe, what you see in America, in the streets is pure forgive me for the chosen no words is pure Nazi demonic hate towards the Jewish people from the river to the sea Palestine would be free should be free that's a call for genocide towards the Jewish people it's not about a two-state solution do you think if Israel forcefully removed half a million Jews out of Judea and Samaria, removed every Jew out of East Jerusalem and Gaza, there's no Jews in there. They were forcefully removed in 2005. Do you think for a second we will have peace? Do you think the hate that you see, the old man who was brutally murdered in Los Angeles for carrying an Israeli flag, do you think we will have peace if they get... Judea and Samaria and East Jerusalem, and they make a Palestinian state. This is pure Jew hate going back to Nazi times. That is what Israel is facing all around the annihilation of the Jewish people. That is why you see Palestinian children inside the Gaza Strip in military boot camps every year, 50,000 of them learning how to liberate Palestine 
And it's the same for children in Judea and Samaria in all Palestinian Arab controlled cities. They need to liberate Palestine. Israel has no choice. The only Jewish state. How many Muslim Arab countries do we have? This is one state. This is one Jewish state that already gave up so much land. That already gave up Gaza. There's not been a Jew in Gaza since 2005. Now there is with the soldiers. They gave up Nablus. They gave up Ramallah. They gave up Jericho. They gave up Jenin. The list goes on and on and on and on. What happened? Do they make a good life for themselves? They turn it into terrorist nests to attack and murder the Jewish people. It's a deep hate towards the Jewish people. It's not about land. And you got the proof in your streets when they are walking around now calling for the murder of the Jewish people. Israel has no choice but to be strong, to be bold, to do everything it takes to eradicate this demonic evil terror regime, Hamas, who also have a lot of terrorists out in Judea and Samaria. The Jewish people are home in their God-given homeland. <coughs> Excuse me. Keep your focus. This is what this is about. It's not about a two-state solution. It's about the fact that you have one state, the Jewish state, the eradication of the Jewish people. That's what you need to keep in your mind, to keep in your head when you see all the photos coming out, when they want to turn it and twist it into the big Israeli brutal army against the innocent civilians. Israel is simply doing what Israel needs to do. And then you need to remember another thing. Israel was forced into this war by Hamas, who brutally attacked us on October 7. There's not going to be any ceasefire. If there is, Hamas wins, and then they are going to continue to attack us. And by the way, they still have 240 hostages held inside the Gaza Strip. We are talking about babies down to 10 months old. If you don't understand anything of all of this, you hold on to the one facts. Israel did not occupy anything. This is the one Jewish state in the world that God gave to the Jewish people. That is what the Bible says, and the Bible happens to be the history of the Jewish state. And I'm sorry, now this video became way, way too long. I not, did not intend that at all, but you have to understand this is the only Jewish state, and they have to defend it. That's why a father is an Air Force pilot, and the son is a ground troop inside the Gaza Strip. That's why all men almost is out now being called into the army. Because if Israel did not have this army, there wouldn't be a Jewish state. They would have massacred the Jewish people years ago. And that was Hamas did the other day. Bye.